What do you think? I think we're dead meat. Real dead meat. You're dead meat! Go ahead and laugh, you guys. If I ever find a little bastard of business, a dead meat. Welcome to the Dead Meat Podcast, an extension of the YouTube channel Dead Meat. I'm James. I'm Chelsea, and we're engaged, and we like to get scared together. I was wavering on whether or not I wanted to just do the intros. John Boy, I chickened out. Uh, <laughs> okay, so last week we did Anaconda. Great time, loved it. We had a we had a good old time, and Lake Placid came up during that episode because, of course, late '90s uh, creature feature. And everyone said, oh, do Lake Placid. It'll be fun. It'll be it's a great a, it's time. It's a dumb movie. If you like Anaconda, you'll love Lake Placid. I did not love Lake Placid. No, Lake Placid sucks. I did not love this. It, it is amazing how these two movies are such a good demonstration of what does work for me as a goofy bad movie and what totally doesn't and this movie is doing all the things i don't like yeah in like a purposely cheesy b movie yeah it's mostly the dialogue the the dialogue is not good because i will say the second half of the movie better yeah when it's just the the plot and the big crock like that's more fun yes but the first half of this movie is just Oh man, it's like a first draft film student script. It's so bad, just filled with cliches and just awful writing. It's awful, not, awful. It's just like awful the first writing. half where we have to spend time with these horrible people who are all unlikable. It's it's rough. It's just and... it's so cliche. Every line that these characters say is either men versus women or city versus rural. Yeah, and I I don't even mean like cuz I also think it's a really cliche bad script and i don't even mean like oh it's cliche in terms of like oh i get that it's supposed to be cheesy and it's kind of riffing on but i even mean the humor that it's attempting in trying to be cheesy is cliche do you know what i mean it's like too aware and it's not funny yeah it's not good No, it's not good. And even outside of the cliches of those like stereotypical uh, dichotomies that it's just constantly hammering. We're like, oh, you're from rural Maine, so you fuck your sister and you're from the city, so you uh, you can't camp in a tent. But besides that, it's also just got really bad uh, writing like. In an early scene, Bridget Fonda's like, I'm not going to Maine. There is no way I'm going to Maine. You will never get me to Maine. And then I like pretty much counted down to like three, two, one, smash cut Cut to her in a helicopter to to Maine. And I'll say we were watching this and I'd never seen it. Had you seen it? I've never seen it. it. Okay, so we're watching it and I'm like, fuck, this is bad. This is like worse than I thought it was going to be. And the whole first half, I'm like, who, like, what bitter screenwriter wrote this like what bitter dude who couldn't get laid because that's how it comes off i'm sorry like who wrote this script and boy was i surprised to find out that it is written by david e kelly who who who's one of his most recent works is one of my favorite things big little lies Lies we haven't watched season two but (laughs) season one was one of my favorite shows that we've watched but he also had already at the point he wrote this had a career in TV. He did oh, Ally McBeal. He was fully Allie established. McBeal was huge. Yeah, like, that was a huge. Lake show Placid when is ninety nine. Ally McBeal premiered in ninety seven and was a huge show. Although I was re- I never read. I never. I'm sorry. I never watched Ally McBeal. I was reading criticism of it that it was like uh, pseudo feminism or that there were complaints that's, yeah, about the, the yeah. characters. I just know the dancing baby. That's all I kind of That's all I know is the dancing baby. Uh, I think this was a paycheck. For sure. I think this was like a, hey, we need like a creature feature or like we need some kind of summer movie and he just cranked out a draft of this. Well, I read that he, he writes his first drafts by himself with a like a ballpoint pen in one to two days and I don't think this ever got revised after that initial one to two day draft. Yeah. Because just the dialogue kills me it's so bad it's yeah 
Uh, and then on top of everything, not only is this guy already successful, established, this is not a, a bitter, like out of work screenwriter or like an inexperienced screenwriter. He's none of those things. But you remember how I was like, oh, who's this bitter dude who can't get laid? He just he seems to really <laughs> like have an issue with women because, wow, the comedy in this dealing with uh, uh, female issues is pretty amazing. He's been married to Michelle Pfeiffer since 1993. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so like, okie dokie. All ideas, I like I, anything that I thought made sense about this didn't after we, I realized who made it. Yeah, it, it really doesn't make sense. Uh, it was directed by Steve Miner, who is a uh, staple of the horror genre. He did Friday the 13th, part two and three. He did Halloween uh, H2O, right? Halloween H2O. I like Halloween H2O. Yeah, me too. So, you know, the, I, but really, I don't have too many issues with this movie besides the writing. Yeah, that's where I'm at too. It's, it's the quips. It's the, yeah. It's the, it's, everyone's just sniping at each other. Because like the movie. cast is, they're talented actors. Oliver Platt, who's in yeah. a ton of shit. Brendan Gleeson. Brendan Gleeson. <laughs> Bill Pullman, I think of as just like a standard. He, like he feels right at home here. Yeah, he feels like placeholder yeah. late and 90s and I don't even mean that. Bit. I'm just like, oh yeah, Bill Pullman's in this. It's fine. And then Bridget Fonda, uh, I mean, she's in Jackie Brown. Yeah, she. it's so funny because I... The beginning of this, I'm like, God, she looks familiar. Like, what the fuck do I know her from? I knew it was Bridget Fonda. And I'm like, why can't I remember what Bridget Fonda was in? I'm like, oh, yeah, she's in fucking Jackie Brown. And, like, if I had, you know, gotten a chance to see her bare feet in this with a little toe, the little <laughs> toe ring on yeah. it, I would have known who she was. Yeah. Uh, married to Danny Elfman. Yeah, that's right. That's oh, right. and then uh, we couldn't forget Betty White. Yes. Who's, of course. Who's great in this. Who's great. Yeah. And is 77 in this movie. Yeah. Who, she's currently 98. She's 98. She's 98. Wow. And as far as I know, is still kicking, kicking hard. Yeah. I mean, like, like I said while we were watching this movie, we could all just... Like her and Hope. Dick Van Dyke. I mean, and, just... and Fred Willard, rest in yeah. peace, who just passed. Like, he was active until the very end. So we could all, like, 77, and she is whip smart She's and sharp so in this funny. movie. Like, oh, man. She's the best part of this. She is, for sure, which I think many reviewers said. she can do this dialogue, mm -hmm. I think. she. I think she instinctively knows how to deliver it without it sounding really stilted. Even Brendan Gleeson's having a hard time with it. It's It all sounds very, yeah, like first draft. And it reminds me of in like screenwriting class, we would all do passes of scripts and you would read them all aloud to each other. Like you all do read throughs and everyone's like, everyone's really bad at writing dialogue at first. It's hard to it's write hard. dialogue that sounds natural. And that's what this sounds like because it's everyone just quipping we're just making jokes this whole time and everyone hates each other <laughs> and everyone's trying to be sarcastic and it's it's ugh, it's just not pleasant also the effects i like they're done by stan winston yeah they built a fucking 30 some foot long crocodile. jurassic park stan winston mm -hmm. yeah the animatronic croc looks great and i i think the cg croc is fine for 1999 yeah for, for the 90s yeah but it's, i think it's fine yeah it's a little when silly he's whipping around the it's bear fun <laughs> oh yeah the CGI bear. bear i think the bear might be a turning point with this movie yeah. where they stop fucking around I with agree. these characters the bear like from the bear onwards is when I'm having a much better time with this movie because everyone shuts the fuck up and just starts deal doing crocodile stuff. Yeah, I not... think that's right. I'm not positive. But no, I'm... it's yeah, it's yeah. Around. we're finally actually doing stuff. We get some set pieces and mm -hmm. yeah. there's a really good scene with Oliver Platt. Uh, and the when he crocodile is right next to him in the water, I thought I liked, that was really I liked good. This. Yeah, that, that, so there's some good. There's some so all you Lake Placid heads out there <laughs> who turned on this podcast and immediately heard us bitching about it. There's plenty to enjoy, I guess, but I don't think any of it can outweigh the fucking dialogue from this first half. Yeah. It's so fucking bad. Yeah, we'll, we'll <laughs> go through it. It's just, I did not enjoy this nearly as much as Anaconda last week. You have such week. big, wonderful boobs. You have such big, wonderful boobs. Thank, thank you. Thank you. What the fuck? <laughs> That was and the way that, we paused the movie. We yeah. paused it so we could look up who wrote this. And that wasn't even like the first, what the, that was no. the straw <laughs> breaking was, the yeah, camel's back. that was back. when we were like, all right, who wrote, the, who was responsible for this? Oh man. Okay. So we, so we start at the beginning. <laughs> There's, we got this guy who looks exactly like Damien Lewis. And, and whose name is David is Lewis. David Lewis. 
Is that X Files? Is that you trying to do yeah. X Files? Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this dude in the. I was like, oh, is it Damien Lewis? No, it's just some dude who happens to be named David Lewis and is a Looks tall like redhead. Damien it's Lewis. yeah. Anyway, so there he's he's tagging beavers. <laughs> There's no way to say that. That sounds good. He's he's doing some beaver tagging on the lake. Uh, Cause he's part of the like Parks and Rec department with Brendan Gleeson, and he and those uh, fucking Parks and Rec people are always so sarcastic. They just give one word answers. Isn't that right? Gee, fuck off, script. <laughs> it's like from the beginning, but everyone in this movie's like, "Hey, fuck you!" No, fuck <laughs> you, buddy. I don't know how this town gets anything done. The bureaucracy is just everyone <laughs> sniping at each other, even if they have no reason to hate each other. It's just. Yeah, hey, fuck you, man. <laughs> yeah, because it's Brendan Gleeson is the sheriff. Twinkies. He eats so many Twinkies in this Oh, part. yeah, because he's fat. Because he's fat. It's funny because he's, he's fat. He's so fat. He's so... Oh, I'm surprised we don't hear him fart in this he's, movie. <laughs> Dude, we were like... We were 10 seconds away when he was peeing in the woods I thought, one time. I thought there was going to be a little fart noise. Yeah, no, but he he's fat and he fucks his sister because he's from Maine. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he doesn't. He doesn't. But, it's just the know, dialogue. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so uh, Damien, not Damien Lewis, goes in the water looking for beavers, gets eaten in a scene that is, th- sorry, Steve Miner, but it's directed so stereotypical. I thought it was going to be a fake out. It's like the camera coming after, uh, like oh. from behind with the music. And I'm like, oh, it's going to be something where he's like, oh, hey, other park ranger. No, it's the it's actual It's just the kill. opening of Jaws, yeah. but not good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is my night, like a nightmare job of mine, by the way, is being like a, cause I think lakes are gross and like we grew up in michigan and i i enjoyed going to the lakes during the summer but they're they're slimy, they they're, slimy the whole yeah. ecosystem is is just very slimy <laughs> and everything the water's all murky and there's like people whose job it is i just think of people who like swim in lakes looking for like crime scene shit like mm-hmm. if there's a body or something and lakes are so gross that it takes days and days to search lake water because it's like you can't see anything it just that's so scary to me and ever there's just stuff touching you because there's so many weeds and ugh. yeah yuck no thank you uh and yeah so he gets eaten by a crocodile which that's yeah that's what i would expect doing that job mm-hmm. just get eaten by whatever lives down there but and what's great is when fucking gleason goes to pull him out of the boat and he pulls out just his upper his half, half yeah. it's great <laughs> but it's so that is cool i liked that reveal it's disgusting. It's and I, nasty. I do love Brendan Gleeson's reaction of like, ugh. I know. Yeah, his reaction is like, oh, Wednesday. Man. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, oh, man. Guess we're going to have to go find this dude's legs. Like, he just seems so, like, inconvenienced at best yeah. by this dude dying on Missing his, his lower half. <laughs> yeah. Uh yeah, we meet Bridget Fonda. Yeah, she's works at a museum in, in New, New York, York and she, city coastal elite. And she is sleeping with her boss Adam Arkin, who yeah. is very much an Arkin. Yeah. He showed up on screen. I'm like, that's not Alan not Arkin. Alan Arkin. <laughs> no, he's a, a son of Arkin. Um, yeah, she <laughs> was the son of an Arkin man. <laughs> She, she, yeah. So, but we don't see him at first. She just is talking to like her coworker. No, we see him first. Do we really? Mm-hmm. Oh, I think I just forgot. Uh, she's talking to her coworker, and she's like, "Oh, Kevin dumped me," and she's all sad. And her coworker's like, "Well, I hate to break it to you, but he dumped you for me, and I'm sorry, but the heart wants what it the wants. Heart it's like wants cool. What the heart Fuck wants. you, bitch." And she's Mariska Hargitay. Mariska Hargitay. Okay, and like both these women are hot. There's <laughs> they're like 90s babes and in walks kevin in the next scene the dude who is nailing both these chicks and he is just the most average looking he's got that arkin voice i yeah the arkin charisma he's got a kind of silver fox thing going on but he looks he's first of all he's wearing a suit that's way too big although it was the the late 90s 90s. as was the style at the time swimming in that suit but he looks like he has the vibe of like in real life, this guy is not landing Bridget Fonda, Mariska Hargitay. This guy is is divorced and is hitting on his students, and it makes everyone sad. Oh. <laughs> it's the vibe I get from this character. It just is. <laughs> I just couldn't understand. And I think it's amazing too that this whole movie, every woman in this, down to like townsperson number two, is smoking hot. 
<laughs> I guess Betty White included. Betty White's a fox. Betty but White like everyone, shot. every woman who opens her mouth in this is like a babe, <laughs> and like a 90s babe. It's kind of hilarious. And is it's like hard to even say what parts of this, like is that a self-aware choice to just have every woman Yeah, the chick who comes out of the like store a, yeah, that's is the most egregious. Is there's like a random, it, it literally is townsperson number two. Excuse me. Is it true you're going to look for some kind of monster in Black Lake? Mr. Police Help, have you seen my bra? I can't find it. <laughs> you're a detective. <laughs> it's also just bad writing it's when she shows so up and is like, here's in case the audience missed what you're doing. Exposition, yeah. Uh, oh, yes. and also uh, the lake that this crocodile is in. This, that, yeah, this is... This, I could <laughs> I, I think this is inexcusable. I think this this is inexcusable. <laughs> this broke my brain a little bit. I wonder if this was like a clearance issue or something. I don't, because there is a real Lake Placid. There is. It's in New York, mm -hmm. I think. Uh, and this takes place... In Maine. In Maine. And... But it's on Black Lake. Yeah, the lake that this takes place in is not Lake Placid. It's Black Even Lake. Even though this... Th I'm looking at this title. It's... It says, have a relaxing vacation at Lake, at Lake Placid. Placid. Okay, I will. And there is a line <laughs> where I think it's Brendan Gleeson says... Well, they wanted to call it Lake Placid, but somebody said that name was taken. You're a god creating the world of the script. You can write it so that you can call it Lake <laughs> Why Placid. Why are you giving your, your fake world... <laughs> problems naming the thing that you wanted I know. to name. That's why I think it was maybe they wrote the script and this is honestly the only thing I can think of because otherwise it's such a dumb yeah. line and it's not even a joke really. It's just a weird thing that I couldn't stop thinking about the rest of the movie. I think they wrote the script. It was called Lake Placid. They're working on it and it's it's a good title. I think it's it just yeah. sounds good. Uh, like I'd never seen this before but like I knew Lake Placid, mm -hmm. you know. And I just think they got into production and we're like, well, we don't want to change the title because Lake Placid sounds good. The studio likes it. We like it. And they're like, okay, we can't really get clearance for it, but maybe we can but do something you, where it's not technically. Why would you be able to get clearance for the title, but not call it that in the movie? If it's like the movie is still called Lake I think Lake it Placid. might be a thing where. They didn't want people they to didn't think want that there was a crock. Yes, and, yeah. They wanted to make it clear this is not the well, real Well, it's Lake not clear. It's, it's fucking not, not clear and one if bit. Anyone knows, if anyone knows the answer to this, I'm dying to know because it's just such a dumb... Th like, I just... I don't know. It's not even that big of a deal. It just... It, it just seems so... I couldn't stop thinking about it. Like, there's an extra step that's added for no reason. Yeah. That they're like, yeah, it's Black Lake. We wanted to call it Lake Placid. We couldn't. It's Black Lake. But sometimes we call it Lake Placid because we wanted to. Because we want, I don't know. I, I really do think it's a clearances thing because clearances are a bitch. If you've ever worked in production oh before, you've taken clearances for everything. Oh, it's so fucking stupid. That's why often in art departments, people will just, you'll like use your names on stuff. Like when I worked in an art department, I put your name and shit when I was making fake newspapers and stuff because then I would just be like, hey, James, sign this paper that says that you can legally have your name in this. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So uh, because she's inconvenient for Adam Arkin and his uh, humping spree with Mariska Hargitay, he sends Isn't her- all Mariska Hargitay's? That's all. Yeah. She cool. has the one scene. <laughs> She's busy. It's the late 90s now. We're not in Ghoulies territory anymore. No. She's like an actual famous person at this point. So he sends Bridget Fonda off to Maine because they found a tooth in uh, David Lewis's body and they need a museum to look at the tooth. So she goes to Maine there. Mm -hmm. And also uh, Bill Pullman's there. He's What's the, his job? He is also Fish and Wildlife. He is replacing the, the half man oh, with David Lewis. Oh, okay. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, oh man, and now I feel even worse for Damien, not Damien Lewis, because it's like not only does he get like just chomped in half, but he gets replaced by handsome as fuck Bill Pullman, who then uh, like gets. Ooh, oh, this I think he's he's like very classically handsome, mm -hmm. and he just and then he Bill Pullman gets to bang Bridget Fonda at the end. Oh yeah, it's it's just you know someone lucked out. <laughs> 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 what if Bill Pullman? was actually behind the whole that's what i would explore in the sequel <laughs> yeah well you could because there's five sequels that's true all of them direct to video and probably none of them i'll ever watch no uh people i i was joking on twitter that we would do 
the series for no we're not i yeah, can't not. i truly oh, can't jesus christ nope uh yeah she's you know she gets there they're arguing between the city and the rural stuff she calls them museum bigots because which that's is a, not a yeah that, that's guys a are a bunch of museum bigots it just it's it's just uh some museum sent you huh what are we all museum bigots in maine she's rude sarcastic you two should get along uh we learn there's an old couple that lives on the lakes so that's betty white and her husband mm-hmm. and yeah, it's the the Brennan Gleason has a giant gun also, which we know is going to end up being used later because, of course, that's screenwriting <laughs> law. And they make a point to like Bridget Fonda's like, oh, my gosh, you have this giant gun. Like, wow, what do you even need that for? Blah, blah, blah. And it's so weird how now it did not even phase me that the fucking Parks and Rec guy is like, yep, here's my machine gun. No, he's a sheriff. Or the shit, yeah. Oh, yeah. It just it didn't even like. It's not, it's a it's more of like a shotgun looking thing than a machine gun. Well, but. okay, it's a big. Gu- it's I a don't large fu- gun, dude. I don't fucking care. Yeah, it's a big gun. I'm just trying to head off the comments. I don't all care. Right? They Trust actually, me. I was reading the IMDb trivia and take that with a grain of salt because who knows? <laughs> yeah, how, no. like I. But they said that they invented a fake gun for like that is not a gun that exists. Oh yeah, it looks weird. It's like a. a it looks like fictional. a doom gun. Yeah, it it is like a video game gun for sure. <laughs> But anyway, yeah, I did not even like think twice that the sheriff just has this in his trunk. Yeah, it's in his trunk in a case. Yeah. That's where guns go. But like in the in- 90s, I mean, I guess the 90s were starting to get into like really yeah. hyper militarized police. Mm-hmm. But it's still, it's weird that that stuck out back then. Um, They go talk to Betty White to see if she knows anything. And she's like, hey, yeah, my husband's dead. Uh, and I she's, killed him. I, I hit killed him, him over the head with a frying pan. Because he like, yeah. wanted to be dead. Yeah, and that's like the plot of Amor, but Amor didn't have a giant crocodile. In God. It. Yeah, uh, they, <laughs> there's not really any follow up with that. Did they late? Is no, it later is. revealed that she fed him to the yes. crocodile? Okay. Yeah, he. I guess he was like, because they started raising this crocodile together, and I think he fell and got eaten by the croc or something oh, but it, it was it was an accident that. and she was like i'm just gonna you know that's right she didn't want to report it because she wouldn't want the crocodile get this is all comes out later because plot twist betty white is a uh croc accomplice i She's an accomplice i knew she was gonna be a villain of some sort in this yeah because everyone on twitter told us well but i <laughs> i was expecting more active of her yeah Mm -hmm. i thought that she was gonna like sabotage the uh the tranking attempt at the end with the helicopter because it all ends pretty neatly like everything gets part of me was hoping we'd see her riding on a croc that would be cool that'd be a lot of fun she's not in this movie that much all everyone who's like yo but you gotta love it betty white's in it yeah for like 10 minutes okay but here's how you fix the here's how you fix the end of the script uh, we're just gonna jump all over the place now. Fuck it. Yeah, fuck it. Okay, <laughs> so they they trank the the big crocodile. Happy end. We get to the crocodile lives. We get to study it for science. Um, and but then there's oh no, there were two this whole time, and the second one jumps out and almost gets Brendan Gleeson, and Brendan Gleeson blows it up. So, no, almost gets Oliver Platt. Or, I'm sorry, and Oliver. Brendan Gleeson. Yeah, he, he. I mix the two of them up also. Yeah, similar statures. Yeah, and they're they're bickering this whole movie it's funny because they're like the same person kind of they're both abrasive dudes and they secretly are in love that's my head (laughs) head yeah we did devise a whole uh, yeah a romantic see that's also what i would fix in my remake of this but okay so when the second croc comes out that's when you have betty white riding it like she's riding the second croc because she's gonna go save the first one yeah and so she's riding it and like riding it like a bronco she and comes out of the water riding it yes, and like she's an got Oprah a, Din. she's got a gun yeah <laughs> and like a spear or something yeah and then there's another fight scene with her that'd be cool that'd be pretty cool yeah but no instead she just kind of gets put under house arrest <laughs> <laughs> yeah and that's the last time we see her <laughs> no because at the very end she's feeding baby crocs that's right she's feeding because those two crocs babies. had babies yeah although i don't think she's in the sequels Oh, that's a shame. I saw Cloris Leachman is in the second one. Really? Oh, man. <laughs> Replacement. Do love Cloris Leachman. Also still uh, thriving. Yeah. Bridget Fonda thought that camping meant Ramada Inn. I thought we were going... Yeah, okay. This... <sighs> Women be like this. It's just she hates nature. Ew, camping. I'm an idiot and thought camping equals staying at a hotel. 
There's a runner of her saying, I have a thing with worms. And then I have a thing with, was it heads? Yeah, something. I want to know if I missed the third one. Because, like, this is such a cookie cutter screenplay. You got to have the, the three. The three thing. So I only I picked know. it up maybe on the second one. So let me know. It was like, I have a thing. No, I, have, I got a thing about worms. I got a thing about ticks. What's the third one? Because I thought it would be, I got a thing about heads. That'd be funny and campy. But no, that, that's not. Yeah. She does get two heads thrown at her. Uh, this a, poor woman, this a, whole script. A severed moose head they find in the water. And then she slaps uh, Brendan Gleeson. He like picks it up out of the water and then is like, oh, a moose head and it rolls by her. And she slaps him. And I, I laughed yeah. at her slapping him. And then later she finds a, a human head of David Lewis. Yeah. Yeah. Not Damien Lewis. Not Damien Lewis. But yeah, she's throwing a fit about how she has to be touching nature this whole time and Brendan Gleeson's like, oh, we forgot to pack feminine napkins. You know, this <laughs> yeah. bitch is on the rag. Is basically <laughs> it, it, it's it's ridiculous. It's just so, and I get, like, I get, I get, I get that it's supposed to be campy, but also when the camp itself it does is not funny. Like, it's just so dated. Anaconda is a horny movie, but it's. It's not the same. It's not the same. It's not prissy lady. Yeah, it doesn't treat its women like complete morons. Even if the, even if like uh, what's her face, uh, Carrie, uh, yeah, is kind of. I mean, I don't know. It's just not the same. Like, no, she's not even. I don't think she's. What were you gonna say? She's dumb. I mean, or she's something? really horny. She's really horny. Yeah, but she's not dumb. Yeah, but she's although, just horny. Yeah. And so although is Owen she Wilson. is talk- the whole time they're talking through them recording sound is very funny. It's like, <laughs> lady, you're bad at your job. <laughs> but yeah, it's different than this. This feels a little malicious sometimes because all the women in this are just a stereotype, and I rarely point out when something doesn't pass the Bechdel test because I think like the Bechdel test is useful in terms of like having a dialogue about how women are portrayed on screen and like what women get to do on screen but I don't think it's a measure of whether a movie's good or not yeah but this one particularly stuck out to me as not passing the Bechdel test because it literally like there would be another woman would enter the frame with Bridget Fonda and I would just like like start the stopwatch like okay how long till they talk about a dude and like within seconds it's like what's it like to be a woman in the woods in maine i mean the guys don't turn all horny or anything like they did in deliverance right <laughs> what are we talking well about? the only other lady because mariska hargate uh only has that one scene so the only other lady is meredith salinger is that her name yeah yeah meredith uh, salinger yes um, who's currently married to Pat oswald yes and uh she's a deputy in here and yeah, she really only interacts with Bridget Fonda the, that one scene, and the rest of the time she's off with Oliver Platt, oh who goodness. really likes her big, beautiful boobs, and yes. she's very grateful for him her to like her. Her big, wonderful boobs. I'm sorry, her big, wonderful boobs. Yeah. And you have such big, wonderful boobs. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and she's grateful that he likes those. This is around when Oliver Platt shows up in his uh, done-up helicopter. Helicopter's scales. pretty cool. He he is a what like a trust fund he's like a trust kid. fund uh croc hunter not really hunter he's like a researcher guy yeah he's like a researcher guy he's like elon musk of crocodile sure uh and bridget fonda and him know each other at one point he's like did did she tell you we had sex and she's like we we, we didn't have sex. sex and he's like ha 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 that's a joke <laughs> that's a joke everyone laugh uh, <laughs> i'm but- watching the uh the great right now on hulu and it's it's such the same vibes of like I told a joke. Everyone laugh, and everyone has to like ha 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 that to the, the emperor. And that's it's like this little fucking rich kid. Everyone's laughed at his jokes his whole life because he's got money. Yeah. You know, I gotta be nice to him. Ugh, yeah, he's he a real obnoxious character. Yeah, he is. Like his whole point is to be obnoxious, but it's also yeah. I and I think the script tries to get you to like him towards the end, and I don't know how well it. Well, he has lines like "chew the bark off my big fat log." <laughs> yeah. Which, to be fair, he says to Brendan Gleeson. He doesn't even aim all of his like weird. Uh, oh no! Yeah, it's mostly aimed at, at the women. He Brendan mostly Gleeson. is like sexually harassing Brendan. Because is that when Gleeson's like, is that a was that homosexual, a homosexual thing? remark? <laughs> and that's when we started just writing this whole shipping them. Yeah, he's like, them. no, I, I think I'm gonna be a homosexual yeah, now I with all of our plans now. I mean, at the end, he gets in the ambulance with him. He does. He rides ambulance the ambulance. He's like, I guess I'll ride in the ambulance with my new boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> I have to. 
Hey, you want to talk about our sponsor this week, Aveo Vision. Contact lenses delivered right to you. And specifically, they're daily contact lenses. The which most comfortable kind. They're the most lenses. comfortable kind and the healthiest for your eyes. We've both worn contacts and the ones where you don't change them as often. I, I feel like I was really playing roulette with my eyeballs. Oh, for sure. <laughs> for Once you're bit. like, oh, you can wear these for a week. I'm like, you mean two, right? I can wear two, them for right? a month, baby. Because <laughs> contacts are expensive is the thing. Yeah. So when you don't have dailies, then you stretch them out for like a month, you know, longer than that. Got to save money. They're your eyes. Don't <laughs> do that. And luckily, Aveo's contacts are really affordable. Uh, there's no like third party markups or anything. So, and you can have them delivered to you on a schedule. So you're never going to run out or that's anything, great. which is good because that's. You got to go to the store to get them. Pretty crucial now. Yes. Yeah. And yeah, yeah any delivery service right now is <laughs> extremely essential. And, uh, and because of that, they are donating a portion of all sales to direct relief. So it's. Um, aid for you know uh, essential workers, mask gloves, etc. Nice. So that's very cool. We had one of our friends at Rooster Teeth. That's our podcast network. We're part of the Roost. Um, she tried out their daily lenses and she really likes them. She said they're super comfortable. She's worn contacts for a while, but said these are like amazing. So yeah, and they also have ones for astigmatism too. I should point out it can be kind of hard sometimes to find. Yeah. Uh, astigmatism I had astigmatism. Lens, but, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Astigmatism is weird. It's like your eyes are shaped like eggs. Yeah. Little yeah. eggs. Little, little eggs. eggs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if you want to try Aveo you... lenses for your egg-shaped eyes, <laughs> you can get a 10-day trial pack for a dollar. A dollar for 10 days of daily lenses. That's so many lenses. Uh, you can go to aveovision.com slash deadmeat. And that's A-V-E-O vision.com slash deadmeat for a 10-day trial pack for $1. Okay, and I guess to, just to get some crocodile facts out of just so we all understand how crazy it is there's a crocodile here. Uh, well, first of all, we're in Maine. Uh, and... It's it, an Asian crocodile? It's an Asian cro Yeah, it would have meant that this crocodile just swam across the whole ocean and went to Maine. But, like, wait, it did it go through the Panama Canal? Did it take a the I Northwest don't Passage? I don't know. Or did it go the other way and swim through, like, south of Africa? Or oh, maybe, like all the way around the All bottom, the way around. The, like, old school way to get... Before they did the, uh, was it the Straits uh, of I, Hormuz? Yeah. Which, once they close them, you're fucked, man. Also, they think it's like 30 feet or something. Like yeah, like it's a big-ass croc, feet. dude. And I think the biggest, uh, I again, IMDb trivia, the biggest crocodile that's ever been like captured, like 30 feet. This one, okay. I think, is, I think the animatronic was like 37. Holy shit. That's, in, that's so big. It's a very large croc. That's like... It's like swallow you a hole. It's a dinosaur. It's a semi truck length. Yeah, at the end, it's on a fucking flatbed truck that going made down the me highway. Laugh really hard. It's such a funny shot because you know that's just them transporting they, the animatronic really, back to storage. Dude, I really think they were like that wasn't even a planned shot, but they were like, "Oh, dude, let's just get a shot we're of transporting them." Transporting it. This, do we have a helicopter? Taking it back to Stan Winston's warehouse yeah, in like, Do we still have that <laughs> helicopter for the helicopter shots? Yeah. <laughs> And they were like, oh, it'll be a shot. Like, they're taking it to the research. But instead, it's like, no, that thing's going to some backlot <laughs> warehouse to just rot forever in storage. I wonder where that is now. Maybe, I, you know, I bet it doesn't even exist anymore. I feel like animatronics, especially, they don't it's stand too, It was too big, They're probably. too expensive. Well, because animatronics have so much inside material that's, like, worth reusing. Oh, sure. Where, like, if you just make a prosthetic, you're not going to really use it ever again. But if you make an animatronic, that's a lot of machinery that, you know, just gut it and use it again. Fair. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a bunch of random shit kind of happening. They're out on boats, and <laughs> the, one of the boats gets flipped up, and Bridget Fonda flies flying. out of this thing for the first of, like, three times that she is thrown from a vehicle. Yeah, and it's I think it's supposed to be a runner like a funny runner maybe but this poor woman just keeps getting launched out like <laughs> they need to not seat her near the back of any vehicle like she gets launched launched out of like two boats in the truck bed i think yeah, it's yeah it's this like poor woman truck. yeah uh they find a human toe oh that thing's gross yeah david lewis's toe yeah i kind of like the line about is like is this the guy who's missing is like 
I knew. Uh, I was, knew him when he was a bit taller. Or yeah. Something. I, yeah. That's, a, that's there, the thing is like some of these lines, a few more passes on the script where you get rid of the bullshit and you keep f- funny lines yeah. like that because you got a good cast who can sell it all. So just a, a little bit more effort. Yeah. I just think this was not like a high effort thing, but it's weird because then you have like this fucking Stan Winston creation multiple i guess he did animatronics of the cow well, and he's, he's doing his job he's not paying attention I to the guess. script but still it just why bother hiring stan winston i mean it made money that's true it made enough money for them to do <laughs> well I, the fucking but the second one didn't come out till 2007 no yeah eight years later dude why did they do th- i don't know I mean, it was direct to video, so I'm sure when it's a piece of Sharknado shit. When did Sharknado come out? Oh, that's a good question. That sounds around right. That sound like Sharknado Dude, feels like I a bet, 2007 type. I bet type. they were like, "Oh fuck, Sharknado was a hit. Let's dig out some old uh, old creature feature it yep. ip." Yeah, for sure. Sharknado was, oh no, 2013. Really? What? Yeah. I know. I feel yeah, like it's been around forever. But, but I think Sharknado was after stuff like Sharktopus, although none of those were as or big. Or like Megalodon versus... Uh, yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, this is the, the part where <laughs> these fucking people at night are in their tent dancing to Tom Jones because mm-hmm. might as well just pick a really stereotypical song that none of these people would put on and dance to, I don't think. That you're gonna put on is not unusual to be. Bad, it's bad, weird. Bad, bad, bad. They they paint this Oliver Platt character as being, although I'm sure it's him just talking himself up, but he's just like, yeah, I have sex and women like me. Although he flirts with Meredith Salinger and she likes she's him, she's so into him. I think she's. I think he is kind of painted as like, no, he is kind of a successful playboy. Yeah, he's like a playboy party guy. So, but his party <laughs> and it's everyone did like just kind of like go go dancing almost to tom jones yeah it's... and that's when he tells meredith <laughs> salinger she has big wonderful boobs yes I'll just, i hope you're including this I'll, line i'll just put in this clip because this i'm playing this clip and just after this line is when we pause the movie to just to find who was responsible and you have such big wonderful boobs <laughs> thank you oh it's also worth noting that oliver platt thinks that crocodiles are divine he yeah, there's, a little bit there's of that. this weird like because he's a mythology nut and he one of his lines is he's like crocodiles were worshipped more than jesus <laughs> <laughs> he just says it with such conviction it's awesome but yeah so he thinks like there's something godly about them and that's why he's never been bitten by one oh yeah he he's has this he's swum with a bunch of them and yeah. they've never bitten him mm-hmm. at all it's nighttime. Uh, Brendan Gleeson goes to the woods to pee. That's when we thought we were just going to hear a fart noise because that's how this movie is treating this character. <laughs> but he hears noises and, oh, it's Oliver Platt. And he's setting traps. He's setting a trap because, um, in which I <laughs> I was thinking about, like, he says, like, dude, what are you doing in the middle of the night? You're going to make noise. It'll attract the crocodile. Like, bitch, you were just throwing a party with Tom Jones as your soundtrack. Just, it's not unusual. To- <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, I guess that doesn't And also, count. wasn't he about to bang Meredith Salinger? He was like, we, excuse me, we would like to mate. Yeah. Oh, God. So isn't he going to go do that? But I then guess. he's going to go set up but traps. But Brendan Gleeson's not allowed to go take a dump in the woods. Okie dokie. Yeah, the traps that Brendan Gleeson keeps falling into, it's another runner. I, I like didn't falls mind. In a pit, gets I didn't hung mind up. the Brendan Gleeson. I like constantly. his silent rage when he's hanging upside down yeah, and staring I, at I him. I liked that too. Like some there are some good little bits in here. Like they have a very Looney Tunes relationship with each other. Yeah, the next day they go out on another boat. This is another time when Bridget Fonda is tossed in the water. Yeah, and this they, is the one where they bring a speaker with them, right? And they lower the speaker down to the water and it's making little baby crocodile sounds. Oh, is that what they're doing? That's what they say. Yeah, they're like crocodiles will respond to like hatchlings in distress. Oh, okay. So the speaker is like, and they lower it <laughs> to the water. Yeah, she gets, uh, because it, like, pulls the rope that is attached to an anchor, and she's knocked into the water again. Yes. And then I think when they pull her out, she's not on screen, but we both heard the line, my hair. My hair. (laughs) This, again, just, let me just recontextualize. They know there's a killer croc in the water. She was going to maybe get eaten by it just now. Like, and the thing she's worried about is my hair. (laughs) 
they thankfully <sighs> brought another random guy with yes. them because this guy gets killed in a drive-by biting that decapitates him. It's pretty great. It's great. Yeah, this dude just gets his head chomped right off because he's kind of looking over the edge of the boat while they're helping Bridget Fonda get back in. And... But no one saw it. So at this point, like Oliver, or I keep mixing up. Uh, at this point, Brendan Gleeson still doesn't, he doesn't believe think it's there's a, croc. a crocodile. Yeah, I don't know why. I think he. What did he say? He thought it was a bear. I. I don't know. It's dumb. It's, it's yeah. a dumb thing to be in disbelief about. I guess. I mean, I guess you know you're a lake in Maine. You probably don't have a croc. But if Oliver Platt flies in and is a croc expert and says there's a croc. And you just saw David Lewis. Yeah, but Lewis. that guy's such a dick. I can't. <laughs> I refuse to believe he's right. I just. I haven't come to terms I with my homosexual to, yeah, attraction I, to him yet. It makes, so. Yeah, exactly. See, uh, he's that's that's what it is. Is like he thinks he's mad about there maybe being a crocodile, but what he's really mad about is how society may treat him if he decides <laughs> to be open with his love. And then uh, because this was one of Brendan Gleeson's deputies who got decapitated and killed, Oliver Platt reaches out to him and gives this weird monologue about a recurring (laughs) dream he had where he didn't have a head and then his mom wouldn't let him into the house because he would be too clumsy without a head and then some kids played soccer with his head and I kind of liked it. I kind of, I'll just play some or most of it. You know, I used to have a recurring nightmare that I was headless. I'd be down on the ground, looking up at my body, no head, just walking around, bumping into everything. And my parents wouldn't let me in the house because they just bought all these new antique lamps and they didn't want me to knock them over the fuckers. And then the neighborhood bullies, they'd see my rounded lad on the ground looking like a ball and then they'd they'd come over and they'd start a, a soccer game. And as I was being kicked around, I'd actually just feel grateful for being allowed in the game. I think it, this is like the first time we see these two maybe be f- friends kind or it's some attempt to reach out mm-hmm. and yeah, it's bizarre. I didn't hate it. Yeah. But I, I do think it's funny that no one in this movie has PTSD except for Bridget Fonda. No, but she's having fun. Oh yeah, that's right. Cause the whole, we see her, she has the kind of thousand, thousand mile stare. Like she just, you know, she looks a little shell shocked, but then Bill Pullman's like, you're having a good time, though, aren't you? And she's like, yeah, it's pretty dope. Like, I did see someone get their head chomped off. What's but... weird is that Bill Pullman doesn't... You, I think you could take him out of this movie. I think and you it, could take him out of this movie, too. You don't need him. You don't need him. No. The other characters are so, like... They're they're zany, but they're very defined. <sighs> I struggle to say that they're defined. But they're they're large, they are large characters. Yeah. And uh, are Bill- you calling me fat, <laughs> Oliver Platt? You're also fat too. <laughs> we would look so cute. <laughs> <laughs> but Bill Pullman is just kind of there. Yeah, I, I think I'm trying to like kind of in my head think. Okay, if I wanted to like get rid of some care, like you know, consolidate some stuff, you could feasibly take out Brendan Gleeson and make that Bill Pullman. But you could take out Bill Pullman and make him Brendan Gleeson exactly. and it'd be much better. And I think but then you don't have a love interest. That's the thing is, I think it's... Uh, and it's, then if you get rid of Brendan Gleeson, you don't have a foil to Hector. And a homosexual love interest. Exactly. Uh, Hector being Oliver Platt. Yeah. If you didn't know, don't worry. Meredith Salinger will yell it out nonstop throughout the movie. Hector! Hector! You could also take her out. She's just there. Oh, she does She's nothing. Just there She's to just there to have get, big, wonderful boobs. To have big, wonderful boobs and also get in the middle of this beautiful same-sex love story that could exist That's in right. this film. But I think it's interesting in uh, contrast <laughs> with... <laughs> you see, this cat is shedding all over the set right now. Lucy. I, I think it's uh, interesting in contrast with Anaconda where they're comfortable sidelining the love interest uh, ostensible mm-hmm. male lead for the uh, duration of the movie and just letting J-Lo do her thing. Whereas in this movie, it's like, no, we need uh, we need leading man Bill Pullman around to just kind of uh, look handsome. Yeah. Even though he doesn't fucking do anything. And like calm down the hysterical female Bridget Fonda. Yeah. It's, yeah. There's too, yeah, there, you're right. There's too many 
characters in this, I feel. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's around now that a bear attacks them, and they dodge the bear, and then the bear gets attacked and dragged into the lake by the crocodile. Yeah, and I'm finally interested in what's happening. Yeah, because we just saw a bear get dragged into a lake by a crocodile. Yeah, and again, we're turning, we're like cranking the gravity down a little bit, and mm-hmm. all the physics are a little weird. <laughs> it's like in Jurassic World when the, the Mosasaur jumps out and grabs the fucking Indo wrecks or whatever and mm. drags them into the lagoon mm-hmm. i like big animals biting each other i feel like that was one of the only things i liked in that oh that fu- yeah i fucking hate that stress <laughs> world. uh it's the same with this where i'm like when the characters aren't talking it's fine but then it's <laughs> yeah. a, as soon as people start talking and they're trying to get me to care about anyone in this I'm not having a great time. They realize that Betty White is feeding this croc. Yeah. With cows. She's leading cows straight up to the water. And that cat, it's a really funny shot when the croc comes out of the water and eats the cow and she's just standing there because they're watching through binoculars. This um is an expensive pet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it makes me wonder if she is able to afford feeding it because she did in fact kill her husband and get his life insurance money. no because she didn't report his death oh that's right he's still right. alive on the books but, oh yeah that's right yeah but you know yeah she's like, buying these cows I'm like they're feeder mice dude cheap. the pan over to the crocodile in the water so funny it's he just great. looks so, that's what lucy looks like when we get her food out you know <laughs> <laughs> just mm. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so while well, they go and talk to her and are like, why are you feeding this croc lady? Yeah, and she's been feeding it for six years, yeah. apparently. But then I think later, Oliver Platt says that the, it's likely like hundred, like 100 years old or something. Yeah, so I think it got big just fine without Betty White. I think, yeah, it just happened to end up there. It had already been alive for a long time. I mean, it had to make it over from Asia. Mm-hmm. So... So they go to Betty White's house and they're like, okay, you're done doing this now. Uh, and even threaten her with obstruction of justice, which I found kind of funny. Mm-hmm. Uh, but while they're doing that, Oliver Platt and Meredith Salinger are off just like going into the croc cove. Like they fly the helicopter to where he thinks the croc will live yeah. to just like look for it. And he's in the water and then it just appears next to him. And this was a scene. This that, scene is actually good. Yeah. I, think this, I mentioned this in the beginning. Yeah. It's, it's tense. It is. Yeah. It, like the choreography of it is good. The choreography is good. The shots are good. The overhead shots of it showing just like them floating backwards uh, slightly. And then the animatronic croc looks yeah. so good. This it, is like a bright spot in this movie for me is this whole bit. Yeah. I, I really love his line when he is like, I'm all of a sudden feeling very foolish about doing this. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, you're, di- he's like looking into the eyes of this croc. And I was like, you're different. You're not like the other ones. Yeah. You're not like other crocs. Which I think <laughs> it's a cool you know, really cementing that this thing is a fucking freak of nature. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I like this scene. It's yeah, cool. I like it a lot. Uh, he doesn't get killed. We were expecting him to get killed after the whole speech about how he's never been attacked by Crocs. And in yeah. fact, none of these characters yeah. get killed. Just some random people get killed. The kill count's very low. Yeah. Yeah. I expected at least not like Damian Oliver Platt. Lewis and then that random Parks and Rec guy, who right? Who gets decapitated. Is that it? I think that's it. Is it just it. two? Yeah. Wow. It's another reason Anaconda is better. <laughs> yeah, everybody dies in that one. It's cool because I, I truly thought that Oliver Platt was going to die during this scene. I thought he was going to die via croc because he's so obsessed with them. Mm-hmm. And I I thought maybe that him and Brendan Gleeson were finally going to have a moment where maybe they become friends or they have they find some respect for each other and it's like oh cool they could be friends and then like one tragic, or both yeah. of them die or you know yeah uh but he's able to escape by he gets out he has like an inflate like an inflatable emergency raft i think is part of his like life jacket situation he has on mm-hmm. and so to distract this the crocodile he pulls the tab on this inflatable thing and like he kind of throws it and it distracts the crocodile long enough for him to get like yanked back up into the helicopter and, fl- and it's cool and the helicopter or the crocodile Croc grabs the, the helicopter, helicopter too. And is, yeah is, she has to shoot it yeah yeah it's fun it's a good scene and okay i need to i need to mention this because mm-hmm. this scene reminded me of it and i maybe maybe our podcast audience will help me uh untangle the mystery of why this is a thing that i believed for so long and only recently realized it's insane no hon in anaconda no one dies from a fish (laughs) flying swimming up their pee hole i so we have a 
group chat with a bunch of our friends and I don't know why we were talking about it, but I mentioned something about how, yeah, hippopotamuses are terrifying. They can literally take planes out of the sky. And as soon as I (laughs) typed it, I realized how insane that is and just followed up with, you know what? Maybe that's actually (laughs) not true. And like to this day, like it's just, it's going to follow me the rest of my life. It's going to haunt me every day (laughs) that I'm on this earth that I for years thought that. And like until I said it out loud, I didn't realize how stupid that was. And I was like, well, maybe helicopters. I swear, like, please help me figure out what piece of media or something led me to believe that hippos are a danger to aircraft. But that's all I could think of during this scene is I was like, oh, it's like a hippo. He's <laughs> jumping Are you sure not thinking water. of marbles? Because there was a Hungry Hungry Hippos game oh my where God. the hippos ate the Don't marbles. Don't patronize me. <laughs> I think it might be another like Jungle Cruise type thing where you... That might be like a joke in Jungle Cruise. Or I don't know. Help me figure out where this came from. Please help her. It's. <laughs> <laughs> I'm losing sleep over it. Uh, okay, so even though the croc almost killed Oliver Platt, he looked into its eyes and he saw a lot of wisdom and beauty in those eyes, and he doesn't want them to kill it because, like, they're going to bring in the Florida wildlife people. They're on their way, so we have a ticking time bomb situation. It's, and it's, once, yeah. once they get there, they can't capture a croc this big, so they're just going to kill it, and we got to save it. And you know what? He's got a point if it's lived for how long has he said? like 100 years and 150 it made it, years it's, it's, or it's something a, yeah again it's like yeah. a freak of nature capture study that thing it, yeah. and study the shit out of it because it clearly has implications for ecology and stuff mm-hmm. and like but yeah this is the the conflict in every creature movie where the government gets involved is the government just is always going to want to murder the shit out of whatever <laughs> creature like whether it's shape of water or even fucking like splash <laughs> like <they're, laughs> i guess splash i think they study her but it's always just this the, the ethical conundrum of of freaks of nature <laughs> what do we do with them so platt and pullman just or not i'm sorry gleason and pullman just want to kill it yeah and Gleason's got that gun. That thing's been collecting dust in the trunk of his car. Yeah. And he was ready to use it. But Platt and Fonda, they want to save this for science. So yeah. they convince them to let them hatch a plan that involves flying one of Betty White's cows over this <laughs> lake like it's the goat in Jurassic Park, just yeah. harnessed uh, over it. And what? You said that he Stan Winston built a cow animatronic. So he, how much of this is real cow? They did. Uh, again, IMDb trivia, so grain of salt. But. Mm. They did have a crane with a like sling with the cow in For it. For sure. Yeah. That's a real cow in I some mean, of those I'm shots. I mean, I'm guessing the animatronic would be any shot where it's like a long shot, flailing in the water, a wide shot, or anywhere it's coming in contact with the alligator. And therefore, there has to be some sort of like choreography, you know? Like, yeah. It's hard to like tell a cow what to do. Got cat hair in your mouth? Yeah, it's because Lucy's been like crawling all over, and I have lipstick on, and yeah. she's <laughs> shedding right now because it's spring, and there's just cat hair getting stuck to my lips. It's disgusting. Uh, but yeah, this poor cow. <laughs> I like. I do like the line where she looks like a giant tea bag. <laughs> yeah, a giant tea bag. And then this poor cow. He's like, it's trying to swim, and there's a shot of this cow just moving. <laughs> the cow is really cute. It's a real cute. And cow. I will say the cow lives shockingly yeah i shockingly, don't understand how and but... i appreciate the shot of it because it's like the the cow falls and then the helicopter crashes and then there's all the fight with the croc and you kind of forget about the cow and then after all is said and done and there's, there's a, a shot, shot of the of cow the just cow. trotting yeah. out of the water i'm like oh yeah cool yeah i appreciate whatever <laughs> studio executive was like <laughs> Now cow lives. <laughs> so they put it and in then the... there's even like shots of them petting the cow. Yeah, <laughs> like it's alive. Look, <laughs> the cow lived. Yeah. So yeah, this is the big climax. Uh, the like I said, the helicopter crashes in the lake with Oliver Platt flying it, mm-hmm. and uh, the big old croc is trying to get him. And they first try to trank him. And then it's like, oh, he's still kicking. Let's just switch to the real guns. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he comes out on land and starts chasing them on land. And that's when Bridget Fonda, they're driving away in a truck and she's in the bed of it. Launched out of this truck. They, what do they hit? They drive over like, like a, I don't know. Is it just a rock yeah, or is it some and equipment? They... And she fucking flies out of this truck. Yeah. <laughs> and then Oliver Platt's like, swim out to me. 
as though getting in the water to escape yes. a croc is oh, a good idea. Let's go. Yeah. Oh, get in the water where this crocodile can move extremely fast, <laughs> even though it doesn't. So is it? Is yeah, the she crocod- outswims this croc. But I, is is it implied that the crocodile is has a sense of like? Is it like anaconda where it's a little sadistic? Is it? Is it toying with her and swimming? I don't slow? know. I think this is just a shitty croc chase scene. Yeah. Where she outswims the she croc and then it. and then does a little fucking like duck behind the wall and it swims past her because she's like hiding behind a little tree. Yeah. Uh, I do like though she's she's hiding behind this tree. It's and, like an underwater tree. Yeah, it's this is all underwater and the crocodile tries to bite her, but it like bites around the tree. Yeah, trunk. It turns sideways. So and, she's kind of stuck in between its jaws. It's, cool. it's kinda neat. And her foot stuck so she's like stuck there it's it's a it's another good little i do i will say this whole issue of like who's gonna outswim this fucking crocodile i love that in in crawl uh which is also a a crocodile movie and it's very good if you haven't seen it but i love that the issue that that it's resolved movie is this florida okay yeah it's a i don't care i'm just heading i know i know i know i know you gotta (laughs) yeah don't at me giant uh I don't even want to say lizard because that's also going to like, they're not lizards. A reptilian uh, murder machine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Aquatic <laughs> murder machine movie. But I like that that issue is headed off by like, she's on the swim team and she's really good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is great. And like, yeah, her dad's a swim team. That's a, that's a good movie. Uh, It ends up getting stuck in the helicopter because mm-hmm. it like tries to get Oliver Platt and then it just gets stuck. And they're like, we technically we did, did it. it. So don't kill it. And there's a whole moment where it's like uh, Pullman's telling Gleason to kill it anyway. And Gleason's like, no, I, I can't. My homosexual lover doesn't want me to. Was that like a homosexual remark? This part where they're like, he's got some people being like, shoot it. And other people being like, no, shoot don't. That. And all I could think of was like the fucking those telltale choose your own adventure games oh, where yes. the option to like shoot it and don't shoot it are up on the screen the and you're playing as going. Brendan Gleeson. And it's like, you pick don't shoot it. And it's like, Bridget Fondo will remember this. <laughs> and then, yeah, uh, Bill Pullman's like, give me that. And he grabs a gun and he shoots it. But it's a trank gun, gun. And they, they tranked it. Yeah, they, they fitted all the guns to be tranks, I guess. Uh but then there's a there's the second croc that we talked about earlier. That's right. Second croc. The second pops croc, up. and they're like, "Oh my God, there's two. And then Brendan Gleeson uses that big ass gun and blows this, blows thing, this thing up, uh, and he's like, "Not dude. anymore." Oh yeah, back to one. Back to one. And then they cut back to the crocodile they captured, and it just looks like, well, <laughs> that's my life. <laughs> <laughs> I love the look of that croc. It's man. so funny. It, 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 I don't know why it looks like a cartoon. It just has such a personality to it. I don't know. Bridget Fonda goes home with Bill Pullman. Or they go to a bar. Yo, to, yeah. Like I'll take you to wrap the, that up. A uh, little this little small town bar. Now she's back to being like, oh, did they wash the plates there? You I fucking nasty w- ass <laughs> hicks. I think it's a winking thing yeah, to die that point. I know. <laughs> I know. And that's when we. Yeah, we see Betty White feeding the baby crocs, and we see that fucking croc animatronic on the truck going back to Burbank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It. If if seriously, it's just the dialogue in the first forty it's minutes. It's just the dialogue that kills needs this movie for to me. be. Yeah, they need it. Needed another pass. It's just not funny. No, it's and I get that it's 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 just it's like none of the jokes land. There's like one or two that I think work. Like the cow being a giant tea bag is very funny because that's exactly what it looks like. (laughs) But most of it is just not good, and it didn't age well (laughs) at all. Yeah, it's it's starting to get into the early two thousands. Everyone's mean. Everyone's mean. I mean, Betty White can say any swear word, and it's very funny. <laughs> well, let's not say that, because sh- there is the scene of her sitting with that one deputy who happens to no, be black. And I, I was, was like, like cut, the cut, cut away from cut this away. scene. <laughs> cut away from this scene movie. We, we have an older character, and I'm like, what are they going to write for Betty White I know, to say I was, here? I was like, thank... F- I, I, exhale cuz she, she's away. like she's like i hope the croc wins and eats your cops is is that illegal to say and he's like i don't know, I don't ma'am. know ma'am and i'm like okay cut cut Move. we're done we're done we're done we're done yeah I, well, I, is it illegal to say okay we're done I, we're done yeah dude i was holding my breath that whole scene i was like oh shit <laughs> we're not woke yet we can't do this scene oh, yeah. okay that's like placid 
Don't make me watch any more of them. Yeah, I I think instead. Okay, so I think what I want to do, and maybe like not right away, but maybe once we get a little bit further into where it's actually summer, <laughs> uh. I think it'd be fun to just do a bunch of creature features for like what? summer, like Piranha. 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 Original Stuff Joe like Dante. That. Yeah. Isn't there one called the, um, um, 3DD? Oh, we no, did we that. watched that with Whitney for a commentary track. Uh, oh no, it was like Arachnophobia. Yeah, so stuff like that. Eight-legged freaks. Eight-legged David freaks. Arquette. Yeah, so creature features. I think. Is that what you want to do? Or Critters. Or we could do cr- the critter series. You let us know. So I think those are where I'm, that's where I'm at right now. One of those two options. Okay. Let us know. Yeah. Because I, I think it'd be fun. We can break it up with like other stuff. Cool. Because I have plans for other episodes. Next week, actually, if scheduling works out, I think we're going to have Mike Doherty on the podcast. Yeah. He's a friend of ours. And we have a fun little episode that we're working on. I'm still ironing out details, but... There's a lot going on right now, because I've got a lot of guests for mm-hmm. uh, What's Your Favorite Scary Movie coming up. Yeah. So, so we'll, we'll see. see. We'll see. Uh, you can follow Dead Meat on social media at Dead Meat James on Twitter and Instagram. I'm at Carebeck, C-A-R-E-B-E-C-C on Twitter and Instagram. And you want merch, deadmeatstore.com. And by the way, even though uh, it's the Dead Meat Twitter, it's still me on that Twitter. And my tweets from that account don't represent my editors, even though I don't think most people would assume that they do. Uh, <laughs> you can mm-hmm. also email us at deadmeatpod at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. Am I supposed to say something else? Nope. Oh, okay. (laughs) Well, thanks, everybody. Uh, Hit us up next week. And until then, I'm James. I'm Chelsea. And this has been the Dead Meat Podcast.